Last month, I went to watch the much-awaited Marvel's Avengers Infinity War. Being a huge Marvel fan, I watched every movie of the MCU since Iron Man in 2008. So it was quite a nostalgic feeling to watch all of my favorite superheroes teaming up against a titanic villain. Like always, the movie had its moment. But the most noteworthy of all of them was Stanley's cameo. It has now become a tradition for Stanley to appear in every Marvel movie. Without these little cameos, the movies will feel incomplete. For those brief 30 seconds in the movie, Stanley would appear and foreshadow even our most colossal superhero and heroines. For those who are not aware, Old Man Stanley is the man behind Marvel. Most, almost every Marvel character is either created or co-created by him. Often he is called as father of superhero comics. But like any of his superpowered superheroes who couldn't do everything by himself, even Stanley had his sidekick. Everyone's favorite web slinger Spider-Man, who is arguably the most famous and Marvel's most marketable character. He was co-created by Steve Ditko, along with Stan Lee and also co-creator of Sorcerer Supreme, Doctor Strange. Unfortunately, he is lost somewhere in those comic book pages he created. Unlike Stanley, he wasn't a person who loves media attention. In his entire life, he never gave a full interview and there are less than five pictures of him on the internet. The American legend was born at Johnstown, Pennsylvania on 2nd November 1927. He moved to New York with the dream of becoming an artist and joined an art school, where he was taught by another comic book legend, Jerry Robinson, who created the most iconic DC villain, the Joker. Well, he was serious about the art, he was serious about learning, dedicated to learning to become a storyteller opined Robin himself about Ditko. Jerry hooked up Ditko with the editor-in-chief of Atlas Comic later Marvel, Stan Lee, in 1956. Spider-Man's exemplary red and blue costume may be very iconic now, but back in 50s it was not very traditional. The arch-type superhero costume was just an underwear over the pants or no or semi-masked faces. But Ditko broke all those traditions and made Spider-Man the right way, his way. The geometric art of Doctor Strange and his projection of other dimensions in it was so otherworldly and convincing that a few believed that he was on drugs. Being a huge success, Doctor Strange and Spider-Man, no one saw it coming when Ditko without any warning left Marvel Comics. Some suggest he left due to political and artistic differences with Stan Lee. He then moved on to smaller publishing houses where the editorial interventions were minimum and where he could tell the stories as he pleased. Out of the Charlton's question is the most notable and Mr. A, which represents the philosophy of objectivism. He comes back to mar commercial comics, market joining Marvel's biggest rival DC and creating most notably Hawk and Dove and the Creeper for them. He was just perfect collaborator. His work was superb. His story sense was brilliant. He was a joy and delight to work with, said the famous Stan Lee when asked about working with Steve. He also said that he deserved to be called the co-creator of Spider-Man. I personally think not just the costume but much of the personality trait of Peter Parker and the whole concept of the master of the mystic arts Doctor Strange is the contribution of Ditko. Sadly, on 29th June 2018, Ditko was found dead in his apartment in New York City at the age of 90. The cause of death was identified as heart attack. His loss to the comic book and art industry is irrecoverable, but he will continue to live on in the immortal characters he created.